What a time it is for Nigeria and Nigerians in Nigeria as Dangote Refinery begins operations. This is Market Square. My name is Olua Pelubi Awe. And as always, I'm happy to have you along on the show. We will look at some details and potential economic impact of Dangote Refinery, which is unarguably the largest refinery in Africa on the show today. But before we go to that, let's take a look at the history of refineries in Nigeria and see how far we have come. The history of refineries in Nigeria is a complex and fascinating one, marked by both ambitious expansion and frustrating stagnation. After many years, an attempt of exploration in different parts of Nigeria, until finally there was a resolution to focus on Bielsa State. Now, finally, in 1956, crude oil was discovered in commercial quantities at Oluibiri Bielsa State by Shell British Petroleum Company, marking the beginning of Nigeria's oil boom. And as you can already guess, it was a moment of excitement and anticipation. Market Square reporter Favor Aya has more on this. Off of truth, it was a moment of excitement and anticipation. The discovery of oil undoubtedly brought a wave of excitement and anticipation to all library and the surrounding communities. People would have likely understood the potential significance of this event for their lives and livelihood. To mark the occasion, there was drumming, singing and dancing, which was a traditional way of celebration. All represented hope for a better future, with the potential for improved living standards, infrastructure development and economic prosperity. This hope would have filled community gatherings and expression of joy. Traditionalists, through rituals and offerings, gave gratitude to ancestors and deities for bringing this blessing upon the land. It's important to remember that not everyone was filled with unbridled enthusiasm. Some harbored concern about the potential negative impact of oil exploration and development on their land, environment, and traditional way of life. Overall, it's a story of hope, anticipation, and a complex blend of emotions that continues to resonate in the community's cultural memory. Favor Aya Market Square. To know more about the community that launched us into wealth, you can visit Oluibiri Oil and Gas Museum. It's a museum located in Oluibiri where you will find the houses, exhibits, and artifacts that tell the story of the oil discovery and its impact on the community. In 1965, the first refinery was built by Shell BP in Port Harcourt with a capacity of 38,000 barrels per day. In 1958, Nigeria joined the ranks of oil producers when its first oil field came on stream, producing 5,100 barrels per day. In 1970, the end of the Biafran War coincided with the rise in the world oil price and Nigeria was able to reap instant riches from its oil production. Now, from 1970 to 1989, there was expansion and nationalization. One of the steps taken as per nationalization was to set up a cooperation that was taxed with the responsibility to manage the country's oil resources, including taking over majority stakes in the refineries. This cooperation was called the Nigerian National Oil Cooperation, NNPC. The Wari Refining and Petrochemical Company, WRPC, was commissioned in 1978 with a capacity of 100,000 barrels per day. In 1980, the Kaduna Refining and Petrochemical Company, KRPC, started operations with a capacity of 110,000 barrels per day. In 1989, the new Potakot refinery was built with a capacity of 150 
1,000 barrels per day, bringing Nigeria's total refinery capacity to 498,000 barrels per day. Now, that's a lot. There was significant progress from the day crude oil was discovered in Nigeria. Market Square reporter Fivo Eya has more on this. Here are some noteworthy progress points. The first of this is that there was rapid GDP growth. Nigeria's GDP witnessed a rapid rise, fueled by oil revenues. From 1960 to 1967, the GDP quadrupled, propelling the country into the ranks of middle-income nations. Infrastructure development was also a product of this discovery. The government invested heavily in infrastructure projects, constructing roads, bridges, airports, and power plants. This improved connectivity and facilitated economic activity across the country. There was public service expansion. Increased oil revenue enabled the government to expand public services like education, healthcare, schools, and hospitals were built, leading to improved access to these essential services. There were attempts to diversify the economy. Efforts were made to diversify the economy away from oil dependency, with investment in agricultural, manufacturing, and other sectors. However, these efforts yielded mixed results. The development of a strong domestic refining sector would create jobs, boost local industry, and contribute to overall economic growth. However, there were challenges and stagnation. It was in the 1990s that the refineries began to experience operational problems due to inadequate maintenance, pipeline vandalism, and corruption. Despite several attempts to rehabilitate this in the 2000s, the refineries continued to operate as significantly below their capacity, forcing Nigeria to rely heavily on imported refined products. In the 2010s, the government announced plans to major overhauls of the refineries. The process for overhaul is low and hampered by funding constraints. Then we took a look at the negative impact of all of this. The first of it is social inequality. The oil wealth did not translate equally to all Nigerians, as more elite a mass significant world, why many others remain mad in poverty. This excavated social inequalities and fostered resentment. Political instability. The oil world became a source of political competition and corruption. This contributed to periods of political instability and military coups. Environmental degradation. Oil exploration and production activities led to environmental degradation, including oil spills, air pollution, and deforestation. The Niger Delta region was particularly affected. The resource cost phenomenon played out in Nigeria, where the dependency on oil led to neglect of all the sector and hindered sustainable development. The reliance on imported refined products has had a significant impact on the Nigerian economy, draining foreign exchange reserves and making fuel prices susceptible to global oil price fluctuations. Market Square, Fevel Air. Africa's biggest oil refinery begins production in Nigeria. We'll get to that in a moment, but first, let's do the numbers.
The Nigerian Naira has depreciated even more since the last time we were on the show. Painfully. As of today, going by the CBN's exchange rate, one dollar now exchanges for 896 Naira. But in the black market, the buying rate is at 1,455 Naira. And while the selling rate is around 1,465 Naira, approximately, approximately, 1,500 Naira. So, one dollar now exchanges for 1,500 Naira in the black market. And this is not a very good place to be, especially for those who want to pay bills, who want to send their kids to school overseas, who want to begin to pile up things and make, maybe make demands out, outside the country. This is not a very good place to be. But at this time, this is where we are. On the 12th of January 2024, the world's largest single train refinery commenced operations in Nigeria and announced that it had started supplying diesel and fuel to the market. The news of the refinery operation commencement brought smiles to the faces of many, especially those who are aware of the fact that the refinery construction started in 2010. 14 years ago. Delays and rising costs pushed the commissioning from 2019 to 2020. And even at that, uh, they had to move it again till 2023. That was around the 22nd of May. The refinery promises to be a game changer for the nation's energy landscape. Let's take a look, a closer look at the project, the mega project, I mean, the Dangote refinery that commenced operation some days back. First, the size and scale. The refinery is located in Lekki Free Zone near Lagos Stogate. The refinery boasts a mammoth capacity of 650,000 barrels per day, enough to potentially double Nigeria's overall refinery capacity. Its single train design is the world's largest, making it a beauty, an engineering beauty, an engineering beauty by all standard. What this basically means is that Dangote Refinery is the biggest one-stop shop for, ref for crude oil refinery in, in the world, capable of possessing a massive amount of oil all by itself. It is truly an impressive feat for all engineers all over the world and a major milestone for Nigeria's economy and energy independence. This complex houses various units of processing crude oil into a range of refined products, including gasoline, including diesel, jet fuel, and others. Second, technology and innovation dimension of the refinery. The refinery incorporates state-of-the-art technology, ensuring efficiency and environmental sustainability and adherence to EOV emission standards. Its co-located power plant generates enough electricity to meet its own needs and potentially supply surplus power to the grid. Now, the integrated petrochemical complex will produce pollutant, furthering diversifying Nigeria's industrial base. But how does this refinery impact the Nigerian economy? And this, for me, is the most important part of this conversation today. How does this refinery impact on our, on our economy? First, it will lead to improved foreign reserves. The operation of Dangote Refinery are estimated to produce around 650,000 barrels per day, which 40% uh, of these barrels will be available for export, and which will definitely boost Nigeria's foreign reserves. The expected exportation of the refined petroleum products by the Dangote Refinery will enhance the country's foreign currency earnings and thus result in boosting Nigeria's foreign reserves. Now, this could uh, stabilize fuel prices in Nigeria, making fuel prices uh, less susceptible to global oil price fluctuations. The second impact is that there will be stabilized foreign exchange. With the presence of Dangote's refinery, Nigeria will stop importing diesel, petroleum products, fertilizers, and petrochemicals, and by this will be saving over $26 billion in foreign exchange. 
The refinery has the capacity to result in foreign exchange inflows of about $15.8 billion for Nigeria, equivalent to around 45.8% of the current gross foreign exchange reserves. The refinery is expected to also slash Nigeria's dependence on imported um, refined fuel, saving billions of dollars in foreign exchange. Thirdly, we should also expect that the Nigerian Naira will experience boost. The value of the Naira, which has fallen in recent months, can now bounce back with the commencement of Dangote Refinery that will export petroleum products and other items. The payment for petroleum refined products in Nigeria Naira will reduce the pressure on the demand for US dollars of euros, or thus resulting in improving the Nigerian Naira exchange rate to the foreign rate to the foreign currency. Once we are able to eliminate this demand, it will create more supply of dollars than demand, reducing and ultimately stabilizing the value of the Naira. The fourth impact that we should expect um, is that there will be reduction in inflation. Nigeria's headline inflation rose to 28.2% in November 2023, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. If the exchange rate comes down, inflation naturally comes down as well. Meanwhile, inflation is projected to revert to its long-run average of 14% by 2025. Fifthly, there will be jobs and taxes too. The project is estimated to create around 135,000 jobs directly when the refinery reaches full capacity, and even more indirectly, which will then boost the Nigeria's local economy. Also, when we export crude to Europe and import fuel, what, we, what happens is we export our jobs and put pressure on our scarce foreign exchange. The refinery will save us from that and create thousands of direct and indirect jobs. Now, despite these benefits, there are uncertainties about a few things. About a few things. Concerns remain about the sustainability of the NNPC's crude oil to meet the refinery full capacity. Also, proper infrastructure development is crucial to effectively transport and distribute the refined product. What then is the future of Dangote Refinery? While uncertainty linger, the potential of the Dangote Refinery is undeniable. If it successfully overcomes its challenges, which I think it could, it could transform Nigeria into a net exporter of refined petroleum products. It could also boost the nation's industrial development and economic growth. It could provide a model for similar large-scale infrastructure. Even in Africa, the story of Dangote Refinery is still unfolding, and its impact on Nigeria's future remains to be seen. However, its sheer size, ambition, and potential capacity and result makes it a project worth watching closely. Before we go on the show today, let me share a few economic fun facts about Nigeria. Nigeria is the fourth world's largest producer of cashew nuts. We are behind India, Vietnam, and Ivory Coast in first, second, and third position. Although Nigeria is not the world's largest producer of cashew, we possess high quality cashews. Nigerian cashews are known for their large size, good taste, and a high kernel yield. Cashew nuts have a surprisingly wild range of uses, both culinary and beyond. Here are some examples. Now, in the kitchen, it can be used for snacking, as cashew butter, for baking and ingredients in dishes. But beyond food, it is used in lotions, creams and soaps. It can be used as medicine to cure diabetes, high cholesterol and heart disease. For industrial applications, cashew nut shells have unique properties, making them useful in lubricants, paints and even brake linings. Additionally, it can be used to produce a fruit, often produced and processed into juice, wine or vanga. Also, 
cashew nut waste can be used as a nutritious source of protein for livestock. Now let's talk about export and revenue part of the cashew nut business in Nigeria. Nigeria is the world's fourth largest producer and a leading exporter of cashew nuts in the world. In 2022, cashew exports generated over $250 million worth, representing roughly 10% of Nigeria's agricultural exports. And when it has to do with diversification, cashew exports contribute to diversifying Nigeria's economy, reducing reliance on oil and gas revenue. This helps stabilize the economy and provides a better buffer against price fluctuations in the oil market. We've also experienced heightened job creation. The cashew industry directly employs hundreds of thousands of people in cultivation, processing and related activities. This provides much needed income and livelihood opportunities in rural areas. Over 90% of cashew production comes from small older farmers, making it a critical source of income for rural communities. The foreign exchange space has also experienced the effect of our cashew production. Cashew exports bring in valuable foreign exchange, which helps the country pay for imports and manage its international trade balance. The government recognizes the potential of the cashew industry and is investing in processing facilities, infrastructure development and research to further boost the sector. Also, the growing industry, Nigeria's cashew production, is expanding rapidly with the government actively supporting the sector. Not to forget that the climate in Nigeria is favorable. Nigeria's tropical climate is ideal for cashew cultivation. Thank you for joining me on Economic Fun Fact. With that, I say thank you for joining me on the show today. My name is Olua Pelumi. I will do well to follow us on all our social media platforms, on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, even on Twitter, to get updates every time we make a post. Thank you for joining. See you on the next one.